Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week I'd like to revisit the PS1 and specifically I'm going to be talking about the PS1 digital mod again. Uh, so I have done an installation video on this mod and um, it's a, an amazing thing to do to your PS1. It really gives you outstanding video quality um, and when you pair it up with an optical disc emulator it's kind of like the ultimate PS1 solution. Now, all that being said, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world. So. Um, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I've actually gotten a couple of these where, you know, someone tried to install it on their own and something went wrong. They weren't able to do it successfully. So then they ended up reaching out to me and giving me their systems. And so far, I've been able to get all of them up and running. Um, but yeah, I thought it might be good just to put out another video on the PS1 Digital, just trying to highlight some tips and tricks that I use in order to have a su successful installation so that, you know, hopefully people who are trying this on their own can, you know, have some better luck. All right, so let's take this one apart, see how things look, and uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first thing to do that really should help you increase your chances of success is just making sure that you have the right tools on hand. And the right tools doesn't necessarily mean something that's expensive. Uh, it just means having the right tools. So a lot of times, you know, problems happen because people are unaware of what they need and they think they have everything they need and it turns out that they don't. Or sometimes they have something that they think is like good enough and then it just turns out not to be good enough. So, um, you know, the first thing that comes with all of these mods is just making sure you have a really good uh, temperature control soldering station. So the one that I own is a Hako uh, soldering station and I'll put a link in the description. But, you know, honestly, I wouldn't suggest this for people who are just doing an occasional mod here or there. Like this is a $100, um, you know, piece of equipment. I use it practically every day. I use it a lot. And so I wanted to get something that was pretty top notch for myself. But that's just for me. I, I do this all the time. If you're just doing this like once in a while, like once or twice a year or something like this, there's no reason for you to spend that much money on a soldering station. Something, you know, there's plenty of good options in about the 50 or so dollar range, which will do exactly what you need. Um, but anyhow, it should have the ability to adjust temperature so that for certain cases, you can lower the temperature or raise it, depending on what you're doing. It should also be uh, possible to change out tips, and that's kind of what I'm showing you right here. So I've got this tip right here. This is a flat chisel tip. I use this for practically everything, like 99% of the work that I do. It's the right shape, it's the right size, and, um, and I, I don't have any problems. I can technically do this with the PS1 Digital, but it's a lot harder because it's very large and so you can easily bridge stuff. And so for the PS1 Digital and for a few other modifications, I prefer to use a tip like this. So this tip is very fine, but if you'll notice, it's not a pointy tip. It actually has a bit of a slant. So that slant gives you a little bit more surface area and it lets you, um, it lets you kind of do a better job of heating up components. If it's too pointy, then you just don't have enough surface area and it takes a lot longer to heat stuff up. So this is the kind I have from Hako. It works really well, but there's lots of tips like this for lots of different soldering irons. So I would suggest, you know, make sure you have a tip like this and make sure you have the right kind of desoldering gun. I'm sorry, <laughs> the right kind of soldering uh, station. All right, so the next thing I'm showing here is just a bottle of uh, liquid flux, this lead-free, no-clean flux. I use this stuff in a lot of different projects. It's absolutely essential for the PS1 Digital because when you're soldering on the flex cables, regardless of whether it's the GPU flex or not, um, you'll have bridges and you can use the flux to separate out the points and make sure that those bridges don't happen or the, you know, you can separate them. Um, this says no clean, but I would actually say it's like easier clean is kind of really the right terminology for this. So if you use flux and you definitely should, I would say follow up after you're done with your work with some alcohol to make sure all the residue, um, is, is gone. Cause you know, it's just not good to leave the board like that. What I have is this little tiny dripper bottle, so I fill this up with flux as I as I need to. I have like a little a little funnel, I just fill this up when I need to. And you know, I apply it fairly liberally when I'm doing the GPU flex installation. And then once it's all done, like I said, I use alcohol and get everything cleaned up. Okay, and so the last piece of equipment that you definitely should have if you're doing a PS1 digital is some way of magnifying um, the working area. So I have this dissection microscope and for the most part it works pretty well. I can get most boards underneath there and I can see what I'm doing and because it's binocular I have depth of field and that helps me to just see what I'm doing. 
So I don't know about all of you, you know, all of you are going to be different ages. I'm, you know, in my 40s. I just turned 40. <laughs> my eyes are not the same as they were when I was 20 years old, you know. I, I, I already use glasses. Um, so, you know, some people are capable of doing a PS1 digital without any kind of magnification. But honestly, I think that's a small number of people. And frankly, I think it's reckless because, you know, even if you can see every little detail, it's very small. Like, why wouldn't you want to zoom in and just be certain that you don't have any bridges or anything like that? So I definitely recommend that if you're doing this, no matter how good your vision is, use a magnifying tool of some kind, either a magnifying glass or some kind of microscope like this. These are also not that expensive. You don't have to go crazy and buy some $300, $400 piece of equipment here. Um, just so that you can see what you're doing, and it just minimizes your, your chances of making a mistake. All right, so enough talking. Let's get started on getting this thing fixed up and ready to go. All right, so I think I have everything here lined up. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of flux. And we're not going to do the whole thing in one shot. We're just going to try to tack it down and get it into position. So I'm going to start by just adding a little bit of solder to the edge of my tip. And just get a few of them here. And that's enough, just to hold it in place. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and look at it under the microscope. Make sure all the pins are aligned properly. If not, I can just take a little bit of solder braid, remove that, try again. And as long as it's aligned, then the next step will be to start working all of the pins into position. Okay, so I went back and I was way off. And again, that just reinforces the point I was trying to make before. Do this with a microscope. Don't try to do this with the naked eye. Um, I'm just going to do a few more points here without the scope and just show you kind of what you're supposed to do. Now that I know everything's aligned, it's a little easier. But yeah, I'm just going to go kind of up and down with my iron, just like that, to try to connect these together. And I'm going to continue to do that throughout the whole flex cable, but yeah, this way I can kind of show you how it looks. Um, it's definitely tricky, and yeah, I would not say this is an easy thing to do, unless you're just... Um, have really good vision, which I don't. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go back under the microscope, finish this thing up, and then show you guys how it looks when it's all done. Okay, so all of the soldering work is finished, and um, yeah, hopefully you can see that everything looks nice and clean now. So I went ahead and I, um, you know, did everything underneath the microscope. I made sure that these two anchor point points here on the left were aligned. So that means that the first pin, um, the first pad rather, is is attached to an anchor point, and then the second one is attached to the first pin. So it's really important that when you're installing this, you make sure everything is aligned correctly. So I did that, um, made sure that all the pins were not touching, no bridges, no nothing, and um, yeah, everything is looking nice and clean right now. So I think we're good, uh, but normally I don't just go ahead and assemble at this point. The next thing I do is I actually test and I make sure that I have um, no shorts or no issues there. So I'm gonna show you how I do that exactly. All right, so I've got my computer opened up here, and this is a close-up of the GPU Flex, and this is in the install documents um, on Dan Kuhn's website for doing the PS1 digital install. So you can see over here that everything um, is labeled and clearly marked. So the first thing I do is I go to these pins over here, and I put my multimeter into continuity mode, and I make sure that there are no shorts between um, the 3.3 volts and ground. So that's something that is very easy and you can see that there's lots of opportunities. So like at least five or six places where ground and 3.3 volts are right next to each other. So you can come in really close with your multimeter and you can you know test one pin at a time. And all multimeters are different, um, but you can see here I have like this little you know sound icon on mine. That's my continuity mode and if I put the meter into that mode and if I touch the leads together like this, you know, you're going to have like a beep. Um, so you can either use fine points, like these are actually a little bit too too thick. Um, so you can either use finer ones or you can go to the bottom of the, um, the GPU flex where the connections are much larger, the pads are much larger, and you can make sure that there are no bridges. So that's the next step for me. I go ahead and I do all of that. And as long as there's no shorts at that point, then I know that my connections look good on the outside and then in terms of uh, continuity are verified. And then at that point, I start to reassemble everything. 
Okay, so I've reassembled the PS1 for the most part, so the PS1 Digital is underneath here. And uh, this particular unit already had an X station installed, so the owner had done this successfully. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down the lid cover switch over here, and let's see what happens. Nice, a blue LED, that's cool. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's great. It's really hard fixing these things because you do your best to find all the problems, but you might not necessarily find all of them. Um, but thankfully, this one is okay. So the um, PS1 Digital is working. And great, looks like the X Station is working too. All right, awesome. So, so this system has been repaired. And now the mod has been successfully installed. Um, so, so that's great. So I hope that some of these tips and tricks are helpful to you guys if you decide to do this mod for yourself. Um, it's definitely not for a beginner. So, you know, I would say you, you need to get your practice up and have some more intermediate mods under your belt before you attempt this one. Uh, definitely take a look at this install guide that I've done before and these tips and tricks I have in this video. Uh, the official uh, installation video by Dan is also outstanding. I would suggest looking at that and the installation docs. And definitely take your time. You know, there's no rush. Um, make sure you take your time when you do these things. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. If you like this content, then consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I have videos out like this every Friday. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. It's always good to hear what your feedback is. And, uh, yeah, and if you guys want any kind of mods done for yourself, you can reach me at oneuprestorations.com. All right, guys, thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.